Hey, David and Brian and fellow YouTubers. Uh, this video is going to be about my decking tool setup for the year. I'm mostly working out of my truck. I'm not really bringing my cargo trailers to sites because I'm using my dump trailer so much. So what I wanted to do was set up my tool system so I had minimal amount of packing of tools from my vehicle to the site and then obviously at nighttime from my truck to my house or to my shop. Um, so I've kind of come up with this system so far. It's working really, really good. And it's all because of the Milwaukee Packout system. I have bought two of the rolling carts here. I got them at Home Depot. Uh, one was, I think, 200 and the other was like 250 or something like that. Normally 300 bucks, so I scored a little bit of a deal. And I've sort of made it, um, I've got a battery charging station, which I'm gonna show you. I've got all my nailers, the fasteners that I use, all that good stuff. So if you're not subscribed, guys, make sure you subscribe because we're gonna do more lives like this and, and you know, show our, our little tiny home and uh, tool reviews and all that good stuff. So make sure you guys are following along and give us a thumbs up if you like the video. And also if you have any questions or comments, please, Leave them down below or, or just shoot them in the chat right now and we'll probably get to them sort of after we're done going through all my jazz here um one thing i love about the milwaukee packout which you probably all know is that they have an ip rating whereas with my t stacks they don't so earlier on in the year i had a jackhammer setup that i have and um, i was packing around this little guy right here I've got it in a T-stack with its bits and it rained, it got into the box and all my bits are rusting out. So having the IP rating on these boxes is huge because you know a lot of the times, especially right now in the spring, we get rained out. So it's just nice to be able to put everything in boxes and, and just throw it in the truck. The only thing I don't have that's IP rated would be my backpack here, which I don't even use as a backpack. I just wheel it around on the cart. So let's go over the first cart, I guess. On the top, I keep my batteries. Now, this might be a little tricky because we've got the camera set up on tripod and it's gonna be a little tricky for us to maneuver and see everything. Plus I'm leaving the room. For Tiffany's leaving the room. But before she does, can you tell me where I need to hold this so everyone can see? Oh, um, All right. Like if I scoot up. That's as far as you can go. I wouldn't go any further. Can you tilt the camera a little so that they can see in the boxes? Uh, yeah, but okay. let me just go and come back. Tilt it here. <laughs> All right, guys, bear with us. <laughs> Live is always fun, right? Okay. So this first case, I keep all my dual batteries, but I'm not just stuck with DeWalt. I'm also using Milwaukee and Hitachi or Metabo. So I've got all my batteries in here and this pretty much gets me through the day. Obviously I have chargers going on as well. So that's my first case. And then I've labeled all of the Milwaukee boxes. I wish they had more of a, a larger plate or an area where we could write on these things. So it's a little difficult, but whatever. So in this box, I've got my charging set up. So hopefully you guys can see that. And basically, I've just got a power bar in here. I've got two DeWalt chargers, a uh, Milwaukee 12 volt, my Metabo, um, regular charger, 18 volt, 20 volt. And then a Cinco charger. The Cinco gun, I'll show you later. I use that for fencing. This thing is brilliant. So that's sort of my charging setup. This is really nice because cords are such a pain in the butt. You know, having this kind of just ready to go. My helper can just grab it, plug it in, and there's no messing with cords and chargers and all that. I just taped all the wires together so it's just all nicely kind of put away there. 
Babe, can everyone still see? Yeah. Is it good? Yeah, you're looking good. All right. So. Um, Kona Man is here. Hey, Kona Man. And then Brian says, DeWalt top system boxes are rated 1P65. Yeah, IP65. So, yeah, the I have the DeWalt 1.0. I've tried and played with the 2.0 but I don't like them. They're just not as good as the Milwaukee Packout. The Packouts have um, just better organization with all the small containers and all that. I know 2.0 has all the inserts that are supposed to be coming, but I need to work now, so I'm not gonna wait around. And I'm just finding that these are, are just really, really good cases. Plus, I prefer how Milwaukee connects together over the 2.0 or the 1.0 or even the T-Stack. They're just quicker, faster, and uh, I think they're, you know, they're super durable, so I'm, I'm really happy. This next box, box here is, um, what is this? This is uh, where I keep joist tape and just random stuff. This is sort of my random box where I don't have a home for things. I don't know about you guys, but we use G-Tape for our uh, deck systems, all of our joists. So I've got four inch, six inch, and two inch. Now this isn't code in Alberta, but we we just go that extra mile to kind of prolong the life of our of our structures. So that's why we use joist tape. It's expensive. This little roll right here is like twenty three bucks, and then I think this six inch is around seventy five bucks, and that's for sixty five feet. So you're not getting a lot for your money and uh, it is a sort of an extra on these deck jobs. So in here I just keep like the camo and the mallet, extra blades, uh, my sharpener for my chainsaw. And then down here, this one is where I keep my nail guns. So the guns I'm using are all cordless. I've got, uh, well, we'll start off with the first one here. This is a Senko cordless gun. I first bought this for drywall and it works really well with drywall, but I'm, I'm more leaning towards the DeWalt gun now for drywalling and the Senko I use for fencing. So I'm putting in two inch screws, depending on the, on the board. But uh, this thing just goes so fast. It's amazing. And then also with fencing, I'm using a 16 gauge Hitachi cordless nailer. This is really good for softer woods. I've done reviews on all these tools. So if you guys wanna see more in depth stuff, just check out our channel because we've got reviews on absolutely everything I'm taking a look at here today. But um, this gun, I, I bought it for finishing, you know, using when you're hanging doors and stuff, but it sucks. I don't recommend it for hanging doors. The nails, putting a two inch nail in is, is a joke. They just, they don't set properly. However, using it on fencing, I like to use this to set all my fence boards and then I go back and I screw off. And I'm using stainless steel nails on this as well. So I don't need to worry about any kind of bleeding or anything. So it just really speeds up the productivity. I can just bang these all out, use my level, tweak it if I need to, and then uh, finish off with the screw gun. A lot of times we'll snap a line and get our screws like perfectly straight. I don't use uh, pneumatic nailers for putting up fence boards. I just, I think it's sloppy. So we, we just, we're very precise with our screws and, and uh, I mean, you can do a hundred feet of fence in like an hour, no problem with this stuff. So that's sort of my fencing setup. Then for framing decks, I'm using the Metabo slash Hitachi Hakoki um, framing nailer. This thing is the best. I think it's way better than DeWalt. It's pretty close with the Milwaukee. I think it's better than Milwaukee for two reasons. Number one, it uh, fires better in the winter. And number two, it's one pound lighter. And I've only ever had to charge this with air once in I think four years or something. So very happy with this gun. 
Then we've got a cordless palm nailer by Milwaukee. This thing's great for joist hangers, plates, all that good stuff. So we use this a fair bit. I'm really happy with it. This is a, a new tool this summer or spring. So uh, very, very happy with this. And then we've got the um, Tiger Claw fasteners. These are pneumatic guns and I've got two of them. So it just speeds up the job. They've got this deal on when you buy, what is it? A thousand square feet of clips and screws, which is like $1,500, um, you get a gun. So that's kind of what I do. And I'm hoping to get another gun coming up here soon because we now got another big deck. All my decks are 700 square feet and higher. So, um, you know, one box of screws I think is 500 square feet. So these are really, really nice. I really enjoy using them. They're just really fast and they, they help suck the boards together. They push them forward. So that is my air kit. This is my nailing kit, I should say. And it's just nice to have it all with me. You know, the big biggest thing I've noticed not carrying a trailer, and I've been carrying a trailer for like 20 years, um, you forget one thing and it can screw up your whole day, just completely destroy it. So, you know, it's, it's important to have this kind of level of organization. And if you can dial it in so that you're not forgetting stuff and just always have extra fasteners and, and hangers and all that kind of stuff, then, then you're golden. All right, let's take a look at the next setup back here. I'll slide this jazz out of the way. Kona man is making jokes, I think. Yeah. Or maybe he's just really asking, where's your Brad nailer? My Brad nailer? <laughs> <laughs> you want me to tilt it up? You can do whatever you want. You got to turn it. I know. I don't think she are knows. Are you going to be up? Are you going to be up here? Okay. I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere. Right. So this is the Brad nailer. I would use, it's the uh, DeWalt cordless 18 gauge brad nailer. It's not in my kit right now just because I, I haven't needed to use it. Um, I mostly use the 16 gauge. We're using screws and I'll show you the different screws because we use headless, we use Cortex, we're using GRKs and uh, Senkos as well. So it really depends on what deck we're using. And you know, there's other things that, that aren't in my Milwaukee pack out. For example, I can't fit a chop saw in there. And right now I've just been using DeWalt's little one, this little chop saw. I love it because it's light and I can pack it in and out of my truck without giving myself a hernia. David said that was a nice gun. Thank you, David. It is. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy with it. I don't love the spooling sound. That's always a complaint but I'm not about to go out and build by Milwaukee just because of the sound. So this thing's been good enough for me. Um, and then, yeah, I've got for demos, chainsaw all the way. You know, I make a lot of the money in the demolition of decks. And my goal is always to take that deck apart in half a day, a day at the most. And we're doing big decks guys, like really big decks with pergolas and stuff, but having a chainsaw, the ability to just buck it up as fast as possible, getting into small pieces and getting it into my dump trailer so that I can dump it and be back on site the next day, drilling holes and preparing my posts and all that kind of stuff. So I'm doing layout. So that's why I'm always, you know, fastest tools, easiest tools. Some guys think sawzalls are faster, but they're not. Um, I, skill saws are faster than a sawzall, and I'll I'll use a skill saw paired with the uh, the chainsaw to sort of demo my decks. So my bag is just got all my small stuff in it. Um, it's just kind of universal. I just carry it around. So in here, you know, I've showed this before. Babe, can they see on the screen? Okay. Oh, we have a question from David. Have the worm drive style saw from DeWalt? I don't. I don't. I've reviewed it, so there is a review on there. And Say you want to? You want to tilt down? Okay. 
So David's asking if I have the worm drive uh, skill saw or circular saw. I don't. I've reviewed it. It's an awesome saw. It's a major game changer as far as power goes. Um, it's really, really easy to use. And, you know, we don't really use that type of saw here in, in Alberta very much. They are selling them at Home Depot. And uh, I just really, really like it. It's very easy to just let the tool do the work. <laughs> I just came to answer Kona Man's question because he's asking okay. if you own a dump trailer or if you rent it. I, own. I actually know the answer to that. I'll let her answer. And it. not only does he own one, you're thinking about buying another one, right? Yeah. Ah. So, so I own a 12 foot low trailer dump trailer. It has, um, I don't think we've done a review on it, have we? No, we should. I've been using it a lot. So it's yeah. it's like all black. It's low trailer. It's um, it's a great trailer. I've had it forever. I paid eleven grand for it like ten years ago or something. It's got the full metal sides, so it's four feet high, and that thing is amazing. I I use it for my demolition, but then I a lot of the times I'll get my deliveries sent to my job sites as opposed to picking them up. It just saves time. I also have a area that I'm that I'm using where we're staging all of our jobs because this year is so crazy with wood prices, deck prices, availability. So we're literally buying like 10, 20 jobs and storing it all on this site. And uh, it's just a really, really great way. So I don't have to go to the lumber yard. I've got all my material for the whole year and uh, it, it's just been a really, really good system. So I use the dump trailer to go to this place to load up my material and and not have to go to the lumber yards. And um, it, it's just a game changer. I also use this dump trailer when I'm doing like renovations. I can charge it out at uh, bin rates, which here is about $200 because it's the size of a 12 yard bin. It's the exact same size. So I've been able to pay it off over the whole course of owning it. And now it's at the point where it's paid off. It's actually earning me money. And it's just been something that's, that's just been like invaluable for my, my business. I bought it hoping to have it paid off. I, I did like a lease for five years and uh, it was paid off before that just by, you know, charging the client $200 per load and, um, it's just been great and it's still it's still in great condition too so there we go i tend to rant <laughs> so yeah this is just like you know tools hand tools basic kit of a carpenter right wrenches screwdrivers hammers saws all bits again everything in here i've done a review on this is a great dewalt kit these are really hard to find now um okay it's this one here it's the one that folds open like that. We did a review on this as well. I show my whole setup. And I've customized this, so it's not exactly what you'd buy. And th these are called the tough cases. So these are really, really nice. So I'm not really gonna go into my bag too much just because there's a lot in here, but I mostly keep like Sawzall blades, multi-tool blades, and, and just all the small hand tools that I require. David says he has the smaller one, but not that one. Of the tough case. I think so. So Dave has a small tough case. Yeah, I've got a lot of them, and um, and I've got the big ones too. I'll just quickly grab one. So this this is the big one. This fits on your T stacks. This is almost impossible to find. I don't know about in the states, but here in Canada, they did a little promo, and now you can't find them anymore. So it's pretty, it's pretty good as far as being able to like hold a bunch of stuff, but you know, the bits, they're all right. I haven't used it yet. It's just kind of on display here. And then when I need, start needing bits, I'll, I'll pull from it. And then obviously we've got these smaller tough cases as well, right? Which, which you can get and customize and all kinds of stuff. 
So that's the bag. So then the small guy here this is my PPE box. This is where I just, it's really nice to have. I keep my knee pads in here. I keep my uh, 3M mask. I don't know if you guys are aware, but cedar dust is really, really bad for you. And I'm like seriously allergic to it. Uh, my throat will close up and it's, it's a bad situation. So I have to wear a mask when I cut cedar. Uh, and I like wearing the full face mask over just the, the smaller one around your nose and mouth because I like to wear glasses as well. So just having the full 3M is, is really, really nice. I keep extra earplugs in here. I got my knee pads. These ones are just DeWalt. Extra glasses, gloves, bug spray. I got my laser mount in here too. So that's what I use this kit for and it's it's been really, really nice to have. Just keeps me organized. Hey, um, yep. do, you wanna, do you want me to put the camera down? Up? No, I'm just having a drink of water. <clears throat> and sit there because there's so many comments. All right, yeah, I'm probably going too fast here. You just go down because the camera's pointed down. You can see my feet? Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Are you going to sit over there? No, I'll go right here. Okay. <laughs> Are we <All> good? Right. <laughs> so, oh, that's so dirty. It's fine. It's so dirty. It's okay. No. It's not Is okay. Wood? No. Yeah. How about I sit on this? It's clean now. It's not clean. She's sitting on Batu wood. So oh, yeah. we'll, I'll show you what that is later. Only the best for me. <laughs> so we've had so many comments. So all right. Um, let's let's answer all, some questions. Let's see. And then we'll get back um, to the, the other tools. Oh, yeah. So Matt Dorting says your reviews are great. Help Thanks, Matt. Make a few purchases. Right on. Appreciate it. That's awesome. And then Brian was just weighing in on the tough cases. He says they sell them at Home Depot singly and you can purchase each individual bit drill driver set and customize your own box. Yeah, so they've got like the, um, the Torx ones, the, oh, they've got so many, I can't even list them all, but yeah, they got the impact one, which I really like. It's got the different impact sockets and they've got one that's just sort of like a multi-pack with some drivers and flex bits and things like that so and yeah they're good kona man is saying he bought that one and we're so behind now on the comments sorry kona man um but he also has a couple of the older style ones and he took one of the craftsman cases and gutted it and put his diablo paddle bits in it oh yeah sweet Sweet. Yeah. yeah, it's all about customizing these boxes to to work for, you know, you. It's all about making money. A lot of guys get carried away. I mean, I know I've got a lot of tools. You don't have to tell me. But a lot of guys get carried away with just buying tools because it's it's brushless or it's uh, it's new. But if it's not making you money and you don't really need it, I don't think you should buy it. Well, Dale's joking here, and he says watching your videos are costing him a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. And hopefully he's buying the right tools that are uh, working for him and making him money. Yeah. I mean, I'm guilty of loving tools and just, you know, what's new and, and all that kind of stuff. But I, I justify it a lot of the times by I'm either running a crew and I can just put it into the whole mix or um, it's just you know, it's time to get a new drill. Like I've had the same DeWalt hammer drill for years. And it wasn't until this year I bought two new ones. And I only bought two because one was on sale, like really on sale, like a hundred dollars off. So, <laughs> so, okay. Am I the one burnt out? I actually <laughs> burned it, it caught on fire, burnt out. I think we got that on video too. Yeah, we did actually. Yeah. Um, but talking about money here, um, Kona Mad said something interesting a while mm. back. He says, you need to increase your prices for your dump trailer. Um, oh, yeah. So. I... Well, that's 200 Canadian. 
Where's Conan Men from? Uh, well, I can't remember. So he just, I think he's from the States. Um, but he just mentioned Craftsman, and isn't that a Canadian brand? Yes, so he's... Oh, no! I am learning this stuff despite myself. Why on earth would I know that? Craftsman is a Canadian brand. Well, you know it because you film me all the time. <sighs> Golly. Yeah. Okay, so that makes me think that Kona Man's in Canada. Yeah. And so we're also just on the topic of Canada. I mean, there's so many comments. Um, uh, someone was asking, oh yeah, Leo was asking, how is COVID working in Alberta? Good question. I mean, yeah. for, for us, we've switched gears. We were primarily uh, renovations, interior renovations, high-end homes, all that kind of stuff. And a lot of those clients have stopped. They just don't want you in their house. Now, mm. you know, a lot of people are renovating and all that, but I found uh, my main core of clients have just sort of stopped. I do have some that I'm still doing interior work for, but we really switched gears and went full hard on exterior. We could see it coming. We we just sort of planned for it and, and we're we're just pounding out fences and decks and and really nice ones like hundred thousand dollar decks. So, but we're also really lucky because I mean we just got really strict right here. Our cases have been going up, so right now all the kids are out of school. They're learning at home, and yeah. uh, people who work in offices, everyone has to work at home. Yeah. But unlike Ontario. Um, guys in construction have been able to stay on the job so that's yeah. really great the restrictions haven't affected you yeah we haven't had any holdbacks you know we, we've been going to work the whole time mm -hmm. it's not like Ontario's had issues I know New Zealand um, they sh they're really strict they shut those guys down all the time and they don't know when they can go to work and mm. when they can't so um, yeah it's it's tricky it's scary and I hope everyone's you know working safe and being safe and all that stuff because it's just uncharted territories, right? Okay, so moving on. Kona Man, who has lots of comments. Oh, yeah. wait. First of all, David wants to know what caught on fire? What was that? On my drill. I'll grab it. <laughs> it was, but you know, it was hard to catch that this on one? camera. It was smoking. It oh. wasn't really on fire. Yeah, it was, it was smoking. This isn't it, but it's, it's the, this is the DCD 996. It's, this is the newer version of it. I actually gave it to my helper, the one that burnt out, but it, it still works. You just can't put a lot of load on it. So it's the uh, older version of this. Um, oh, Leo says he has to get vaccinated to go to work. Is, is your company requiring that? Yeah, that's interesting. We, got that's all, we really have, interesting. it's interesting. Like lots of people are anti-vax, vax, you know, I just think, They've been working with COVID vaccinations for <laughs> over 20 years. So like they know what they're doing, but that's just me. Okay. So Kona man has revealed he's from Florida. Um, right on. And he watches a guy on YouTube from the Boston area who charges 500 per load for the dump trailer. Okay. So let me, let me clarify on that. Mm. The $200 per load is just for the trailer plus I charge the dump fee so because you don't know what my client's going to put in there one day it could be brick the next day it could be wood the next day it could just be styrofoam and carpet or whatever so I charge a flat rate of $200 plus the dump fee so typically we're like you know 400 at most because dump fees can be around that 200 if, if we're moving some serious weight but um, yeah, 500 is good. But you know, when, when we're on a job site, the alternative is we just get a bin. And so having a bin is sometimes cheaper for a client because they could get like a 20 yard bin, right? And then there's only one pickup fee and one drop off fee. So this way I'm able to be mobile. I'm not scratching their driveway. I can park in the back. I could park in the front. I can take it home with me. I can do all these things so it it makes it so the client can have their driveway at night when we're not there and it just keeps everybody a little happier because sometimes these bins not only are they uh, ugly 
but you get the whole neighborhood putting their trash in there. They think it's free and, <laughs> or they know the guy who owns the company so they can just put their garbage in there. I've had that situation. And, <laughs> and I know everyone on this forum who's in construction has dealt with this. So, you know, it's, it's just That's something funny. I've sort of been doing. Okay. So should we look at more stuff? Yeah, yeah. I'm just so interested because Conan is talking about Craftsman, the old Sears brand. Oh, yeah. Um, that Stanley Black & Decker bought. Yeah. So is that the same brand here in Canada? That yeah. Yeah. It's because huh. Craftsman does the tea stacks as well, except they're not calling them tea stacks. They have a different name for them. And they're all just doing the red handles. Um, I actually have one tote back there that's Craftsman with the red handle. I did a video on that, how I was like, should I return this for a DeWalt or not? But yeah, the tea stacks. Did be you return it? No, I kept it. <laughs> <laughs> I needed it. The I don't know if you guys know this, but tea stack has a 2.0 coming out and it's already out in some places. I don't know if it's here in North America yet, but um, they have a 2.0 system and all they've done is really change the latches and the connecting system they're using the harder plastic with the metal pin and the reason i think behind that is that craftsman's more pushing their sort of t-stack um line and and so they've upgraded those pieces whereas the dewalt t-stack i don't i don't know what's going on there i don't know if they're phasing that out and just going to focus on 2.0 you can rarely find them in the stores now it's always the craftsman so who knows all right so my next box this is my measuring box now right now i'm just keeping in here i've got a uh, 100 foot tape by milwaukee i've got a bunch of string lines in here you never know i like to lay out my decks with string lines so i know exactly where it's going to be and then i lay out my posts as well just so I can get a visual and sometimes the client wants to see where their deck is going to be because we have these three-dimensional uh, concept drawings but sometimes it's just easier to kind of stand there and say yes I'm happy with the overall size of this. I've got extra tape measures in here. I've got a digital or sorry I mean my uh, Bosch laser. I don't use this one that much. I have um, the professional. I can't remember the name of it but the GLM 50, I think it is professional. And then this laser here is amazing. I absolutely love this. It is so good. And, you know, squaring up decks, even in the daylight, I use this and I pair it with the receiver with this guy right here. And it is hard to use sometimes in the daylight, but if you just take your hat and you put a little shadow over the receiver, it'll pick up in a second. So I use this to square up my decks a lot and, and just also find elevation. You know, when you set your first post, when you're doing your concrete and you've got your sauna tube, for us it's six inches above ground here for code. Um, then, you know, when you're setting that grade, you'll put your six by six posts on top of that and I'll just use my laser, set my grade, mark all my posts, and I can cut them all off. And then I can be putting on the beam and I can be joisting all, all in one day. I can be done that whole entire thing. So the laser is a game changer. I don't use string lines for levels. I just use string, string lines for layout for mainly just, you know, where's my post going to go and uh, where's my concrete going to go and all that kind of stuff. And I also use it for keeping my deck boards straight. On these long decks where they're like 50 feet long, I use a string line to just check every like four or five boards and make sure that we're nice and straight because you don't want to start to snake around a bit. So that's my measuring kit. It's really nice to have it all in one place. Keep okay. the charger in here. Yep. David is asking, are these Festool boxes? <laughs> yes, they are, David. <laughs> Yeah, that's, uh, does David want to know what I own? <laughs> well, I know you're going to tell him. <laughs> so that's just a couple. The rest are out of screen. They're over here and over there. Um, but yeah, I've got 
This is the Festool MFT3 table. I've got two of these. We've got two sanders. I've got the domino. We've got the uh, track saw. We've got the vacuum clamp. We've got the trim router. And then we've got the medium size router, the 10, what is it? The 10, four, I can't remember everything here. The 1040 or something, it's the medium size router. And then just little accessories and stuff. But my fest tool is when I'm doing serious finishing, cabinetry, kitchens, um, custom mill work, all that kind of stuff. That's when I bring out the gray boxes. So. You're a tool hoarder. <laughs> I'm not a tool hoarder. If I was a tool hoarder, I would not be using, <laughs> using the tools. Okay. So. I use my tools. I might even abuse some of them. But, <laughs> but no, I'm not a hoarder. Uh, well, okay. So David did want to know. So it's a good thing you went through the, the list. Good eye, David. Yeah, you, you <laughs> spot those things. They're, yeah, it's like, he's saying that must be expensive. Yeah. That's correct. <laughs> yeah, you have no idea. Well, I I went out. I was doing this extremely, extremely expensive renovation, and um, the wood was all pre-finished. It was all stained. It was beautiful wood. I could not scratch it. So that's why I ended up getting some of the Festool stuff, like the sanders and the vacuum clamp, and some of the the routers to to work with this material. Um, and yeah, it, it's not cheap. I mean, you guys know what Festool prices are. They don't really change anywhere. They're all kind of the same price. So yeah, it was an investment, but it's a total game changer. It takes you from here. If you're a good carpenter up to here, like the tool, it just changes how, how you build, how you put things together. And the end product is, is always amazing. So not to mention the Sanders. Um, by far the best type of sander I've ever used. Maybe Merca, I think is probably similar, but I haven't used those yet. But, um, as far as vibration goes, that's a big thing for me because I've got bad tennis elbow and, uh, having a nice festival sander, the orbitals, you don't feel it. So yeah. All right. Next. This is my screw and fastener box. How many of these do you have? These I just have two, two sets. Just? Yeah. Two sets, but how many actual boxes? This many. Plus, plus those ones there. And it exits stage The ones left. over there. <laughs> you, never want to, you, just, you don't want to give her a straight answer, right? I got this many. Um, yeah, we're really into GRK screws. I do not use brown or green treated screws at all anymore. Last year I was using them and they drove me mental. I've been using them, those screws for years and I couldn't really justify using GRKs, but now I am. These ones in particular, the number 10, three, three and an eighth, screw these things they're expensive don't get me wrong this is 75 bucks for 350 pieces so that's really expensive you know you can get a box of like the brown treated screws i don't know how many come in a box like 3000 for maybe 50 bucks so it's it's expensive however these are stronger because they're number 10 they with the uh the bits, I mean, you, you never strip them. I haven't stripped one yet and you can pull them out and reuse them. Whereas the painted screws, you know, half the time the screw doesn't even fit on the bit and I'm just chucking them on the ground. I can't stand them. They snap, they twist. These things are so good. They don't split the wood, which is a major, major plus to me. This is huge. It just shows that, you know, you're just a, on that upper level of building decks and fences and all that good stuff. You're not a weekend warrior. So I think, you know, and, and in, in the end, you don't have any callbacks, right? Because you're using good fasteners. So I'm all about the GRKs, guys. And sometimes we use these guys. These are 14 inch 
GRK. I've used 16s as well. This is sort of when we're doing four by six retaining walls and I want to suck them all together. Um, I use these. They're pretty good. I have noticed when I'm going and I hit a knot, they do not want to go through. I've had to cut a couple off and that's even using my large half inch impact. Um, so that's those guys. Obviously I'm using Joyce Tanger nails. We always use the 10 D's. Um, and then we've got three inch hanger nails. We've got some, what else do we got here? A lot of the times when we do joist hangers, we will screw them off first. My, my uh, helper, he'll go through and he'll screw them off. I'll check them because if they're off a little, you know, he's, he's kind of new to hanging and stuff. So if he just puts two screws in, then we can adjust it. And then once I've approved all the, the hangers, he can just go through and nail everything off. And we've been using the palm nailer because I try and avoid carrying a compressor around, but at least until we get to the decking portion, and then we just sort of lock up a compressor on site and, and leave it there. So yeah, we use the, the screw hanger nails or hanger screws to start, and then we finish off with the nails. And then this is um, the Cortex screws. This is the Decorators brand right here. Cortex, if you're not familiar, they are a stainless steel screw. There's a hundred in, not a hundred, sorry, 224 in one box. This box here is $175. Okay, this is like gold. The beauty about Cortex is, and, and all these headless type of fasteners is you can get them, they come with the color of the deck as a plug. So there's no pre-drilling. You just screw this right into the deck and then you put your plug in, hammer it down with a nice flat hammer and away you go. It's really, really nice to use. And we use these on all of our fascia boards, our starter boards and our finish boards and a lot on the stairs. So you, you really have to have these. So, and a lot of times the clients, they don't want to see those screw holes. So that's what we're using. And then um, we've got some like lock line screws or ledger lock screws. And then we also use GRKs, I'm buying them by the bulk now. So um, these are three and an eighth. No, not these ones. These are the longer ones. Sorry, these are the longer number 10 screws. I use these a lot too, just to sort of set things up with my four by sixes. We use four by six a lot, not for posts. We use six by six for posts. We use four by six for fencing. Uh, we use four by six for some retaining walls, depending on the height. And, and these are just nice to kind of, you know, screw things together. So GRKs. Now, on top of this, I carry around sort of a, a backup box right here. It's just a thin box. And this has just sort of a bunch of little fasteners in it. So I'll start over here. I've got the um, number 10 D hanger screws. And then I've got 10 D hanger nails and then more hanger nails. And then we've got the Cortex plugs up here. I keep all my T bits in here and just other bits. These are some ledger lock bolts that we use when we're putting the first ledger on the house. And then some more GRK three and an eighth screws. Then we've got the small, we call them headless screws, just tiny GRKs. Really, really good for cedar, you know, trim carpentry, that type of stuff. Really, really nice. So this is sort of my backup box and uh, specialty box, if you will. All right. Kona Man says, I use the thin case for my tap cons. Oh yeah. Do you like those tap cons? Cause I'm not a huge fan of tap con. I find, uh, I find they just don't work well with, for me. I don't know why. I just don't like them that much, but yeah. Oh, you can't see me. Okay, this is the final kit. 
This is the one I started with. This is my first kit. This is my power tool kit. Can you see everything all right, babe? Yeah. Okay, so in here, I keep number one impact. This is a uh, DCF887. I've got the small DeWalt skill saw or circ saw. That, I think that impact is the one David was asking about. He said, there it is. I'm not sure. Oh, that might be it. Yeah. I don't know. Um, and I've got another impact. Then I've got the planer. This thing is key in building decks. You've got to have this, especially nowadays with wood being so wonky. I, I can't tell you how much wood I'm taking off just to make my deck sit flat. These two by tens are just all up and down. I try and pick through it, but it's, it's a real pain. I've got a Sawzall in here. I've got a jigsaw for when I'm doing stairs. Small grinder, the metal blade on it. Sometimes we use screw piles and we gotta cut off the screw pile a little bit. So this blade is okay. It's the new Diablo uh, metal cutoff blade, four and a half inch. Honestly, the Sawzall with a good metal blade on it beats this thing out hands down, no problem. This, this thing takes forever. So we just have it. <laughs> I've got the new Milwaukee Fuel multi-tool 12 volt this thing is a game changer we just did some reviews on it check it out me comparing this to the xr version of uh, dewalt it's just night and day so you know one milwaukee <laughs> tool in here and then we've got a big impact this is dewalt's old 18 volt line and i've got a couple of these from back in the day and i just stuck the adapter on here this is the DW059. This is what I use for some big, heavy bolts, you know, uh, ledger lock sometimes, or those 14 inch GRKs. And then we've got the right angle drill. Sometimes we need this. We used this last time when we were connecting the six by six posts to a plate on a screw pile. Uh, this deck required screw piles, so we had to screw GRKs up into it and the plate six inches off the ground. So that's what we use this for, really handy. And then we got another impact. I'm not huge on changing bits, so I just like to have, you know, all my impacts ready to go with all the bits and I'm just, just grabbing the drill as I need it or the impact. So that's it guys, that's what I use. And then I've got behind me there, I've got the chainsaw, the Dwalt stand. I have my own cement mixer, and which has also been really, really great over the years. I find just renting stuff just isn't worth my time. So yeah, I've got my own cement mixer. <clears throat> and if we need jackhammers, we've got all that stuff. So depending on what stage we're at. Another thing we use, which a lot of guys might not know this, is we use the biscuit joiner and we use that to put grooves in hardwood. So this is Batu wood or IPE wood. Um, they have a fastener that goes in here and they're okay. You know, if you want that real small gap, well, one deck we just did had a, a 3 16 gap on it. So you couldn't use your standard kind of hidden fastener. So you can either route this out with a router or you can use these and blast it in there. The reason we had to use this, and I did uh, sort of a talk about this on the last video for this biscuit joiner was because at the end of the deck, you could see this, the end of the board. And I did not want to see this joint or sorry, not joint uh, groove dado on the ends. So that's why we did them all individually for every single joist. Otherwise, I would just push this through a router table or just use a hand router and, and get it done that way, way faster. But that's for the 316th clip, super pain in the butt. I'm 
all about the uh, Tiger Claw fasteners. I just think they're awesome because they're steel, they're strong, they really hold it down. And I'm going to try and start using GRKs, or sorry, not GRKs, uh, Tiger Claw fasteners on this stuff. We're going to see. It says it can do it. And uh, it's just so much quicker. It took us like days to lay lay it down this this way using these little slots. All right, guys. So I think that's a nice little peek into my life on how I'm <laughs> doing my decks. We did have a request for a shop tour, but I think I think this was a good start. Well, this is a good start. Yeah, we'll we'll yeah. do a shop tour one day. I mean, <laughs> behind me. This is usually where the MFT table sits and I stand here and I do my reviews and then to the left of you there's like a table, a saw stop table saw and I've got more tools all the way down there. Um, yeah, it's just, there's just tools all around me. It's crazy. So I don't know if we'll ever do a full shop tour just for privacy reasons, but. Um, also doing a live, our technology is not there yet. <laughs> yeah, we need to switch out some, some tech. <laughs> but uh yeah thank you for for watching guys appreciate it and uh you know as always keep on crushing it and uh yeah make sure you leave some comments and give us a like thanks again guys